personal injury court. This is the matter of Griffin versus the Carters. Uh, Mr. Griffin, it's my understanding from the documents that you submitted to this court that you sustained some fairly serious injuries when you fell out of a tree while you were trimming this tree on the Carter's property. Your documents indicate that you have $150,000 in past medicals, you're seeking $100,000 in future medicals, and you want this court to award you $250,000 for pain and suffering for a total of half a million dollars. That's Is that correct? correct? Yes, sir. And uh, Mr. and Mrs. Carter. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, it's my understanding from what you all have submitted to this court, y'all believe that he got injuries from being a tree trimmer and that it's not your fault, although it happened on your property. Correct. Exactly. But this is his fault. It is yeah, his fault. Yeah, it's his job. All right. So, folks, I've reviewed the documents that you've submitted to this court. Now, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, Mr. Griffin, my understanding is that uh, you're a tree trimmer, right? That's tell, right. Tell me what that entails. Well, first, let me give you a little bit of backstory. Um, I served in the military for six years. Uh, and thank you for your service. Absolutely. It was my pleasure. Got out in 2004. Uh, been a gardener for about nine years. I really enjoy it because, you know, beautifying somebody's lawn, bringing them joy and something like that, it, that's, that's just things that I really feel rewarded for. Is it fair to say you know what you're doing as a gardener? I would like to think so after nine years, sir. Okay. Now, you've done some work for the Carters before? I have. For about five years, I've been doing work on and off. Um, my cousin Dwayne here, he helps me out whenever we're doing any area work or any bigger jobs. Okay, what were you supposed to do? What was I supposed to do? I was yeah. basically supposed to go up this tree, trim it down for a party that they have coming up. And, uh, yeah, that's when I got attacked by uh, Splinter and his two cousins. Now, you've, tr you've trimmed trees before, right? Absolutely. You've trimmed tall trees before. I have. So this wasn't a new task for you? No. Mr. and Mrs. Carter, this, this incident happened on your property, didn't it? Yes, Your right. Honor. And you all were planning a party of some sort. Yeah. Tell me about that. So, um... I've been an investment banker for about 20 years. Yes, sir. I retired early because I wasn't spending enough time with my lovely life or a beautiful property. We're about to celebrate our 20th anniversary. And Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate that. And she really wanted things perfect. And I said, you know what? Money's no object. You do what you need to do to get this place up right. We've had, we've had Scott come over many times. He's worked five years for us and um, he's always done a professional job. Now, this is your property, right? Yes. Y'all have right. done pretty well for yourself. Yeah, yeah, we feel like we have. Th we this it. was going to be a big soiree, huh? It yes, sure was. 75 people. So, Mr. Griffin. You understand what you were supposed to do as to Absolutely, your trimming Honor. the trees, right? I've done it before for him. I've done it for, uh, before for other properties. Uh, Tell me how you got hurt as a tree trimmer. All right, well, we got started setting up. Every time we do a setup, we always go through preventive maintenance. What's that entail, the preventive Basically, we inspect all of the mechanical par uh, components. We inspect all the ropes for frays, tears, or anything like that. We, in we check our harnesses. Then how'd you fall? We'll I'll get, get to, that. to that. We'll get to that. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Anyhow, um, so I'd, he's responsible for setting the top and the lower portions of the mechanism. And your cousin was there with you that day? That's accurate. Okay. Uh, so he sets it up. I put on the harness, shimmy up there. I'm starting to do, you know, remove these uh, leaves with the with the chainsaw that I have. It's just a little small chainsaw. So you got a little chainsaw. A little bitty one. Yeah. And you're, are you, what are you pulling off? Are they branches? What are they? It's, it's, it's basically the palm leaves. I climb up there. I start pulling back some of the brush that's up in there. And next thing you know, I've got this swarm of rats that start coming at me because I, I guess I started, you know, messing with their nest or whatever the heck it they was. They came out of the tree? Yeah. yeah. They started flying at me, started clawing. Oh, man. Feet. All kinds of other crap. <laughs> that gets, snakes and rats are my thing. It, well, it yeah, so makes you can, my skin crawl. Nothing prepares you for, for neutral rats coming at your face. Now, Mr. Griffin, you actually submitted a video to this court of, of the actual of rat the encounter. That's accurate. Let's right. take a look at it. You are, you are there and uh, trying to pull away. Right, I am pulling away some of the brush, like I mentioned before. Now, what's that? That is actually one of the rats. There's one right there. Okay. So that rat comes over and that's actually jumping on me. And there's actually more in there about to jump on me as well. And, and they eventually get on you. Yeah, they were on me. They you... were on me in my shirt, biting my chest, which I have additional photos of. Yeah, you did submit some of those. Uh, to I, the I actually have them right here if you need to see them, Your Honor. I... Matt, please get the photo. I mean, there's other uh, images in here that show the other injuries that I sustained Thanks, during the process. 
so what are we looking at here? This so is this th right here is basically some of the claw marks that were on my arm. If you go to the next one, you'll look at some of the bite marks on my chest. Ooh, okay. Yeah. What would you estimate? How many rats were on you? Probably about at least a good eight or nine. Oh, oh man. Okay. So, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, this is a bad deal, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. This isn't something you wanted for him. Absolutely no, not. But it was on your property. We had no idea about rats up in the tree. Well, you believe it's his fault. Oh, absolutely it's his fault. They were supposed to have taken care of all this stuff before we I We had no there. idea that there was any yeah, rats in the tree. That's, That's right. his profession. He should he have should known know. that. That's, and, and he said that he's known about rats in the tree, so why wouldn't he check it? That's, you see how, why would we ever I climb I can't really tree? check it without going up there now, can I? Well, no, how are we supposed close, close to now? now? Y'all, we got rules here. Sorry. We got know. rules here. You direct your comments to the court. Sorry, Your Honor. So rats swarm out of the tree and they yeah. get on you, then what happens? My God, all these rats in my shirt, biting me. I'm trying to get down. I lose my balance. Ladders flies this way. The aperture that I so have. So you had a ladder down there? Yes, sir. He was the one on the ground uh, basically keeping hold of it. Break we always have stop. For a second. Mr. and Mrs. Carter, do you all remember when this happened? Yes, we were just coming home uh, from a boat ride, and you can see the, the docks just off to the Must side. Nice. We could see that. You see, that's what this is really all about, right? You want a piece of our money. I don't want your money. Folks, I want you to be held. You got to get, you got to let me get to the truth. So please, finish so telling me. We came me. home, and we saw this, this rickety ladder up on the tree there, and he was, he was, he was climbing up it, and now, she you, commented to me that... You see your house here with that red arrow? Right. That's, that's correct, right sir. That's is, right. is that the tree he was climbing? Yes, yes it was, Your Honor. Honor. That's pretty far up, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And he should... That's, be, that's a long fall. He could he do told it. Us he, he saw the tree. He knew his risks. It's, Mr. Griffin, obviously, the rats are all over you. They're biting you. Right. You're trying to figure out what to do. At some point, you hit the ground. Yes. And what I, was going through your head when you slammed on that ground? Well, exactly. whenever I lost balance, the descender that I had actually caught. When the descender catches, right. it, it stops you, right? It stops me from hitting the ground. It's a part of our safety procedure, so that's, you know, that's what we had. So and I had to hit the ground. I run this courtroom. This is a respectful process, even though you disagree. Sorry, We're not going to have disrespect. You direct your comments to me. So, you hit the ground. Yes. You realize that you are hurt. No, whenever I hit the ground, I was unconscious for a little while. Um, after, um, after my cousin had helped me out, uh, he was basically taking care of it for a little bit, and then I came to. Okay, well, let's hear from you. Your name is Dwayne Griffin, right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Griffin, come on up. Tell me what you remember happened on this day. We did our safety checks, then secured the top, the top anchor point and the bottom anchor point on the tree. Okay. With the belay device. And I proceeded to let my boss walk up, up the ladder. So about five minutes into it, he just starts screaming and yelling and, and he's getting erratic and he's like, he's obviously in pain. Next thing I know, he fall, he's on the ground. So did he hit the ground hard? He hit the ground very hard. Let's see you brought some Absolutely. kind of apparatus with you. So this is the industry standard harness for tree trimming. And is this what Mr. Griffin had on that day? This is the exact model. Okay. This is the front right here. It's worn around your hips. All right. So this is the belay device or the descender. Okay. And this belay device is to stop you from falling? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. When the belay device is engaged, this rope is not going, and this is rated for 500 pounds, Your Honor. He's, okay. 140, 140 pounds, pounds soaking wet. wet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so... Me, me too. <laughs> when he fell off, he hung there for a second. And to disengage the, the device, you click the button, you flip it all the way over, which allows the rope... Then it's a free fall. Slot. So he's up two plus stories... Yes, Your Honor. ...hanging with rats on him. Yes, Your Honor. He's screaming. They're obviously eating his flesh, yes, right? Yes, Your Honor. And now he opens this device to try to get away from them. I think in the chaos of the moment, he flipped it all the way open, which then caused him to free fall two stories. You may take a seat. Thank you so much. Mr. Griffin, now you submitted some other uh, images to the court. Yes, sir. I want to understand the extent of your injuries. Is this uh, your arm before it was fixed? That's my broken arm. Okay, and you had some other injuries. What I other did. injuries uh, you had? This is my spinal, my L2 through L5 were all broken. So on the left where the circle is, is your broken back. That's it. After this fall. Then on the right, that you've, got, you've got surgical rods and screws in your back. Yes. And that's why you're suing for $150,000 in past medical. Well, between that and I'm... 
and 100,000 in future medical. You know, it, it, Take your time. I had a life. Yes, sir. Before this. So when you're sitting here trying to accuse me of taking money, that I had a life. I used to ride motorcycles. Did you know I was a three-time champion in ballroom? Does that even freaking matter to you? It does, but you can't blame other people for your misfortune. All right. Mr. Griffin, this is obviously very emotional for you. What, what have been your thoughts about the future? What future, Your Honor? What freaking future do I have right now with bolts in my back? Mr. Well, Griffin, you... I know you feel passionately about this. I appreciate that. You've suffered some terrible injuries, but we do it with respect, okay? Thanks. Mrs. Carter, you see he's hurt really bad. Yes, and I right? feel horrible. You can understand why this is so important to him, obviously, right? Oh, yes, I can. And that this happened on your property, he thinks you're responsible. But if somebody plays Russian roulette on your property, you're not responsible for the outcome, Your Honor. We hired him as a profession. He told us he could do the job. Yes, ma'am. He should have had the correct equipment, yes, and he should take the safety precautions he needed to take. Yes, ma'am. He admitted he was aware that, that, you know, these things Which live in the surprising. trees, then why didn't he take the proper precautions to prepare for that incident? If y'all knew there were rats in the tree, don't you agree you have a responsibility, morally, ethically, if we to knew? tell him before you tell him to go up that tree, of right? Of course, yes. Okay. Yeah. They didn't know okay. you If we had knew we had rats, we would have gotten rid of them. So, Mr. Griffin, how do you know that they knew that they had rats in these trees? Well, if you would let me call the witness that I brought, that would probably change things. Witness? Sheriff Matt, I want to hear from this witness. Would you retrieve the witness from the hallway? Yes, Your Honor. Come on up, man. Right here, right here. So, ma'am, state your name for the record. My name is Veronica Marshall. Uh, Ms. Marshall, what do you know about today's case? Um, I've actually been exterminated for the past three years for the Carter. Ooh. Um, Mr. Carter contacted me in January and uh, explained to me that he's seen rats on his property throughout the property. Okay. Um, and he wanted me to come out and check the perimeter as well as the grounds of their home. When you say a rat problem, are you talking about one or two rats or no. more than that? No, actually, when I came onto the grounds, I seen that there were several rats throughout the property. Um, and as you can see in this work order that I have, uh, we actually set up to have uh, monthly visits to come throughout the month of April. Well, this work order reads, customer reports presence of rats on property at ground level and around the perimeter of the backyard. Still want to deny it? That's ground level. At the beginning of this case, you all have maintained that you didn't know anything about rats. Hold on for a minute. In a court of law, veracity, believability, and honesty of witnesses, that's the foundation. If you come into my courtroom and lie, then I disregard everything that you said because you cannot be trusted. You told me that you didn't know anything about rats. All the while, you had had an exterminator out there who was supposed to come back. You can imagine that, that the hair on my head or what should be there would be standing up. You lied to me. When you come into my courtroom, do not lie. <laughs> Zip it. I've heard enough. Your Honor, she got rid of the rats. That's why she was there. Ms. Carter, are you ready to go to jail? No, Your Honor. When I say zip it, please zip it. We had no idea there was rats in the trees. And I would never didn't mislead you. you. Well, tell me that. Did you tell Mr. Griffin about the rats in the grass? I didn't. Did you? On the ground? No, I didn't. I think I've heard enough. I'm ready to render my decision. In every personal injury case, there are three elements. That someone did something wrong, number one. That that wrong caused, number two. And the third leg of a personal injury case is it, the wrong caused harm. Here, you're clearly harmed. I've seen your x-rays. I've seen the uh, medical bills that you've submitted, uh, 250000 in past and future medical expenses. Uh, clearly, you are in pain. These are severe injuries. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Carter, you all are homeowners, and the law doesn't require you to be responsible simply because something bad happened on your property. But it goes further than that in this case. You had a moral and ethical responsibility to tell him there are rats on the ground. Be careful whether you knew about rats in the trees or not. <laughs> now, Mr. Griffin, the fact is the cause of your injuries is you let yourself go into a free fall by releasing your device. 
The law is unforgiving. As much as I hate it, I've got to find against you because you caused your injuries. And in that regard, regardless of how I feel, I must find for the Carters and against you, Mr. Griffin. That is my final decision, and this court is adjourned. (sighs) Our attorneys across America just viewed this case for the first time. Let's hear what Hoyt Tessner has to say. Just because you get hurt on someone's property does not mean you have a personal injury claim. The owner does not guarantee your safety. The owner must be negligent. And negligence requires fault, causing damages. Here the plaintiff needed to prove the homeowner knew or should have known about rats in the trees and that it was foreseeable that rats would attack. It could have been a much different outcome for the plaintiff if he had such proof. 